Hi Church! So glad that you could join us today. Uh, if you're not ready, uh, please make sure you find a room uh, where you could join us in worship and uh, let's have a great time together worshiping the Lord. Amen. us uh, anywhere, Lord, and we thank you uh, that you have given us this uh, 
opportunity and lord uh we just adore you lord uh, everything you stand for everything uh that you've done for us lord jesus you've uh, given us something very important during this time uh you've given us uh during this uh tough and time uh tough and trying times, Lord. You've given us a great living hope, Lord. And we, we hold on to you, to your promises and to your word. Thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name.
Good morning, brothers and sisters in Christ. I'm so glad that you tune in to the online service today. I'm so glad that we can worship God together and learn from the Word of God together. Let us pray. Oh Lord Jesus Christ, we acknowledge of your presence here with us. We pray that you continue to lead and guide us to worship you. And today, especially learning on relationship, that we may learn to love you more and to learn to love the people around us. Help us to, to live a life in such a way that we may reflect of your love to people around so that people will be connected to you and get to know you through our lives. And we uphold this time unto your hands. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now, brothers and sisters and my friends, have you ever watched this uh, wonderful movie? And you know, I love this movie, Captain America Civil War. You know, this movie is a great movie to watch, right? Because the, co the conflict between the heroes in this movie make this movie a great and exciting and interesting movie. But if this happens in the church or in your family, right? In your homes, right? It will be a horrible thing, all right? So let me explain this, all right? This is a conflict between Iron Man and Captain America. You see, both of them have the same desire to fight evil, to protect the innocent. But what happens is that both of them also have very strong different opinions on how to go about it. So therefore, they have a conflict with each other. So we see there is a, the battle at the airport and that was very exciting where we see Iron Man led a group of heroes fight against with another group of heroes that was led by Captain America. Alright, you see all of these, they, they are good heroes. But just because of poor conflict management, I mean these heroes choose side and they fight against each other. You see these heroes, they are supposed to use their abilities and their powers for good. But eventually they use it to hurt each other. So eventually who wins in the end if they continue like that? Of course, we know that the evil wins, right? When good ones fights against each other. You see, this movie shows something to us. It shows the reality of relationship in a family. When each member of the family, right, they're supposed to work together, but then when they fight against each other just because of different opinions or different desires, you know what happened? Who wins in the end? The devil. Because the devil wants to destroy what God created. And that is family unit. So brother and sisters in Christ and my friend, welcome to real relationship. This is what we're going to talk about today. I'm sure we all know by looking at the surrounding, by experiencing it uh, firsthand by yourself, right? We all know that the reality of relationship is so different from the ideal of relationship. Now, let me ask you for those of you who are married, all right? If you do, you remember the day when you hold your spouse's hand in marriage, right? And when you hold your spouse's hands in marriage, have you ever thought that maybe one day I will slap her face? Maybe one day I will kick him out of my house, or maybe. Maybe one day when he's get old, right, I will transfer all his money into my account. No, right? You definitely, you are not thinking about all of this. But instead, you'll be thinking that we are going to hold hands together until we are old, alright? And we are going to take marriage photo every single year. I'm, go I'm going to carry her on my back when I'm old, just like during our younger days, right? Definitely, these are you'll be thinking all the wonderful images of your marriage life. Let me ask you, of all of those of you who are parents, right? Do you remember the day when you first hold your little baby? Right? I mean, have you ever looked into your little ones and you thought to yourself and say, maybe I'm going to send you to the rehab one day. Or maybe this child is going to get pregnant before marriage. Or maybe this child is going to be rude, rebellious, violent and become a drug addict and I will kick him from uh, the house. No, you are not thinking about all these things, right? But instead, you will have all the wonderful images of your child growing up to become the person. Now, isn't it good to believe that if we are really sincere, if we really have good intentions, then all relationships will be okay. Our marriage will be okay. Our relationship with our siblings, with our parents, with our child, our friendship, will all be okay, right? However, we all know, by looking at surrounding, by looking in our own lives, right? We all know that there is the reality of relationship. That is so different from the ideal relationship. And today, let me introduce to you one of the very real thing in a relationship. And that is the big word that no one can actually escape from it. And that is the big word, conflict. 
Now, when it comes to conflict, some of us don't even want to mention it because nobody actually enjoy conflict. Now, I thank God that in my life, this year is going to buy to be our seventh year of marriage. Uh, we were still, uh, we are still enjoying our marriage, but not without conflict all right to what i remember is that we have one major conflict but then thousands of minor conflict let me share with you uh, what i experienced all right when you are not happy with your spouse you know what happens you sleep back to back all right one face one side and one face the other side okay and and then i rather have the buster than you and what you do on the bed is you draw an invisible territory on the bed and you make sure you don't touch any body parts at all. And if you accidentally cross the territory and touch her toes, right, and she will kick your leg off and then she will say, get off, you're not getting any toe. If you want some toe, you play with your own toe. Welcome to marriage conflict for those of you uh, preparing for it. Now, if you come from a yelling family, and most probably you're going to bring your yelling culture into your new family. And if you married a yelling person, right, most probably you do not know because during your dating time, right, you are, everything is so nice. Everything is so romantic, right? But out of a sudden, during your first week of marriage, right, you did something silly and he or she just yelled at you. Ah! And you wonder, did I marry a demon? Lots of surprises during the first week of marriage. But we all know when it comes to com conflict, it can become complicated and it can become emotional, right? You know, some people keep all their dissatisfaction and anger inside of them and you ask them, are you okay? Fine. Is there anything? Nothing. What do you want for dinner? Whatever. You know, some people will just sew in all their anger within them and then add more wrinkles to their head. But some people will express and explode their anger by stomping their feet, kick the dustbin and slam the door. Hopefully the other person will hear it. So why do family actually fight? Well, there are a lot of issues why uh, families actually fight over with. But the, there are some of these top issues. You see, money is the big one. Money for me, I think, is the top conflict in family relationship. If any one members of the family members felt being treated unfairly, right? You know, that kind of resentment, they can harbor resentment for years and even for a lifetime. That's why the Bible says it's really true. The love of money is the root of all kind of evil. Therefore, the love of money can even destroy a family and divide a family, right? And I, I, I just thank God that my conflict with every Abigail is not always about money. But it's about food because we both of us we love food. When there is only one slice of cake, one piece of chocolate, you know, we fight. But she always wins, and that's the father's heart. But sometimes I win when the mama stands on my side. Alright? And then another big thing, why families actually argue, right? We see that when several families are engaged in a family-run business, it can become very complicated. And it will become even more complicated when that business is passed on to the next generation. And that's where we even see business conflict can bring into the family. You see, another big conflict that happens in family all the time is, is about the in-laws related conflict. From mothers-in-law with daughters-in-law to fathers-in-law with sons-in-laws conflict. Alright? This is not the way to cook this. Alright? Uh, this is the way. Uh, this is not the way to teach your child. Uh, you should spend less on this and the argument goes on and on and on. Sure, the couple is in love but the couple must remember when you get married, you are not only marrying your spouse, right? But you are also marrying her or his family as well together. You know, when I got married with uh, my wife Tina, right? Uh, I realized we have this conflict Think ideas a lot of time, all right? And it's about my body weight, it's about how I lose weight, right? A lot of times we argue over these things, right? But the moment when my wife team up with my mom, huh, I surely lose in the argument. No wonder the Bible says two are better than one.
right? You see, there are also many other issues in the family conflict. Another big one is over the care and discipline of the child. Another big one is also about family planning of events. You see, all of these things can turn out to become a conflict, right? You see, there is no easy fix on any types of all these family conflicts. You see, there are many issues when it comes to family conflict, but there is only one source of conflict in a family relationship. And if we were able to acknowledge this one source of conflict, and if we were able to own it and admit it, that I'm guilty of it and I'm part of it, right? Immediately we see that everything start to cool down in a family conflict. You see, this is the one single source of conflict in a family relationship. If we would humble enough and admit it that I'm struggle with it, I have, I'm a part of this, right? Immediately we see everyone's tones of voice cool down. You see, this is also something I really believe that is true in all levels of relationship, whether it is a marriage relationship with a friendship, whether it's a relationship with your kids, with siblings, or with your parents, right? There will be less stomping of it, less yelling, less nagging, less scolding, right? Less soaking of anger, right? Less silence fight. When we able to acknowledge that I'm also part of this source of conflict, of this source of problem. So today I want to introduce to you this source of conflict, this source of problem from the Bible. And in fact, it was written, introduced by James, the brother of Jesus Christ. And if this is the first time you read this passage, most probably this is going to be one of the most profound principle of relationship that you ever heard before. All right. So James, the brother of Jesus, introduced to us that the one source of all conflicts that happens all the time and he begins with this question in James chapter 4 verse 1 and he asks what causes fights and quarrels among you now if I would ask any couple who are in conflict what causes fight and quarrels among you are uh, definitely immediately we see couples pointing at each other and this is the same with any groups of people, all right? Uh, parents with teens, brothers with sisters, mothers with daughters, right? What causes fights and quarrels among you? And it won't take long, right? The blaming game and the pointing game uh, begins. Why? Because we all say that I'm always right. My way is the better way. My angle is a better angle. I eat salt more than you eat rice. my in Cantonese, which means that I'm more experienced than you. And you did not listen to me. If you listened to me earlier, we would have saved the money. We would have gotten the discount. We have already parked our car earlier. Or you have scored a point and you have avoided the accident. So whose fault is it? And we all say it's you. And James is telling us today, and we want us to understand that when you are in conflict, right, that the source of all conflict is not about them first. It's not about him first. But it's about you. It is you. So in James chapter 4, verse 1, it continues to say, He say, he asked the question, What causes fights and quarrels among you? And he said, Don't they come from your desires that battle within you? James is telling us that you got the desires that is battling inside you. You got the desires that vomiting out from you. You got that dissatisfaction, that argument, that demand, that source of all conflicts in you. And what is that thing? James explained in chapter 2 and he said that thing is that desire is this. You want something but don't get it. You want something, but don't get it. So you kill and coward. But you cannot have what you want, so you quarrel and fight. Now, brother and sister, my friend, you know when we are in conflict, right? Our first thought is always, it's him, it's her fault, it's their fault, but it's never about us. But let's just pause for a while and think about this for a while. Let's just be honest with ourselves. Isn't this true? The reason we are conflict with other people, with your spouse, with our kids, with our friends, with our siblings, or even with our parents, right? Because there is something that we want, but we don't get it. Right? Isn't that true? What do we want? We want people to respect us. We want people to admire us. We want people to appreciate us. We want them to 
understand us. We want them to obey us. We want them to listen to us. We want to be loved. We want to be served. We want to be honored. We want to be heard, right? And we want the sl uh, slice of cake first. And that's why. And when we don't get it, we scold, we nag, we quarrel, we fight, we yell, we blame, we point finger at each other. And eventually, we hurt each other. And James says, it is not them, but it is you. You got that desires in you, that you got that source of conflict that is in you. And what is that? So James says the source of all conflict is simply this. I'm not getting what I want. The reason that you fight because you are not getting what you want. The reason that they fight because they are not getting what they want. And that's the reason of all conflicts. Now, every time when you have conflict with others, there is something that you want. There's something that you feel that you deserve. But when you don't get it, you kill which means that there is something that you want it so badly, even to the point you are willing to hurt the people that you love. Indirectly, you kill and destroy the relationship. You know, we see in life is that young people kill the relationship with their parents because their parents are not willing to give what they want. So they fight, they lie to their parents, they behave differently, they purposely go to the, towards a different direction from their parents because they do not get what they want. And we see in life is that parents kill the relationship with their kids because the kids won't choose their way, right? They want their sons and daughters to behave a certain way. They want them to do exactly what they think is best for them. But somehow they didn't do as exactly what they want. So some parents actually even over control of their time, even control the friends that they meet. And eventually they kill their relationship with the parent, with the kids because they do not get what they won. But brother and sister in Christ, on the other hand, can you imagine what happens in the house that in the midst of conflicts, is in the midst of conflicts, if everyone were able to just pause in the midst of argument, in the midst of about nagging and scolding and stomping of it and slamming of dog, if everyone were able to pause and think for a while that the reason I'm arguing, the reason I'm nagging, the reason I'm yelling, I'm scolding, is because I'm not getting something what I want. And that's the reason. You see, the problem is not just all about them, because I'm also part of the problem, and I'm also guilty of this source of problem. I'm also actually struggle with it. It's also about me. If we would actually humble enough, admit it, and acknowledge that we are also part of this problem that I'm not getting what I want, I believe everyone will cool down right at that moment. Perhaps some of you may say, you see, my husband didn't work, work hard enough. He's insensitive. He's, uh, he's boring. He's unromantic, right? Maybe the reason you are complaining is because you are wanting something that, but you don't get it. And maybe there is a discontentment that is in your heart. Only God can feel it. Right? Maybe you are saying that my wife, she's not too careful. She spent too much money. All right. And she's spending too much on the Facebook and she chats a lot. All right. And you are complaining because there is something you want, but you don't get it. And maybe you are also complaining. My kids won't behave. My girl won't clean up the room. My son, all right, hang out with the wrong group of people. And you keep nagging and nagging because you want something from them, but you don't get it. Or maybe you say that my parents don't understand me. They keep nagging nagging, all right? And they don't trust what I do. And the reason you are rebelling because you're not getting something what you want in life. You see, that is the source of all conflicts. And that is very true. You got that source that is inside of you. You got that desires that is inside of you. And what we need to realize, brother and sister, is this. When you fight in a family, and when you win in an argument in your family, you win nothing at all. In fact, we all lose in the relationship. When you fight with your spouse, when you win an argument with your spouse, right? In fact, you don't win anything at all. 
you even lose the relationship. So this is something practical, I believe. When you are about to lose control of a temper, when you are about to 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 score, right? Remember this principle that the reason I'm in conflict with this person or with anyone around me is because I want something and I believe that I deserve something, but yet I don't get it. The source of the problem is is in you that I'm not getting what I want. And when you remember this principle in the midst of conflict, I believe we can be wiser how we react in the midst of conflict. That in the midst of conflict, remember this, I'm not getting what I want. You know, I remember in the early uh, years of marriage, right, I was learning to become the man of the house, okay? So I would actually uh, go take the clothing, put it in the washing machine, wash it, and then hang it. And honestly speaking, I'm thinking that that's a pretty good husband, okay? But what I didn't realize is that there is a wrong way of putting the clothing into the washing machine. And there is a woman's way of putting the clothing into the washing machine. And, and, and there is also a woman's way of hanging the clothes. And she's like, you didn't do it right. And I'm like, what's wrong? And she said that you, you got to put this clothing into this uh, laundry bag and then you got to hang on all this way. And I'm like, right, you woman, you got to start learning new way. And if you do not like it, you do it yourself. And definitely, of course, I didn't say this, right? But, but thank God, I learned fast. And I realized that, I mean, there is no right or wrong way of hanging the clothing. But it's basically just preference. And I realized if I keep on arguing to get what I want, right? You know what happens? I may win the argument, but eventually I lose the intimacy. So I realized that there is something that I can do. I finally choose to give up my preference and say, okay, I will do it. You know what happens? It sounds that I lose the argument, but you know what happened? I win the heart. And that's why we have Abigail today. But then not all conflict can be settled that easily, all right? All right? By just knowing the source of conflict may not even settle some difficult conflict. And that's why James introduced to us something that is so powerful that we all can do together as a believers. And he suggests this in James chapter 4, verse 2. You want something, but don't get it. You kill and coward, but you cannot have what you want. You quarrel and fight. And then he said this, you do not have because you do not ask God. You know, James said, the right thing when you do not get what you want is not to yell, it's not to nag, it's not to scold, it's not to keep pushing and forcing forward, it's not to point at each other, it's not to blame each other, but instead to get on your knees and ask the Lord. You want your husband to spend more time with you? You want your wife to be more understanding? You want your son to be more disciplined? You want your daughter to break off with that group, wrong group of friends? Don't start a war with them. Don't keep pushing and forcing them to do something they are unable to change by themselves. Because only God can change the hearts of mankind. But instead, get on your knees and pour out your heart and your cries to God and ask God, Lord, this is what I want for my husband. Lord, this is what I want for my wife. Lord, this is what I want for my child. I got married very young um, to my husband. Uh, we met at Christian camp and we were married for 12 years. I found out um, 12 years into my marriage that my husband had committed adultery. And, and when I did, it took me on a journey. So the first time that um, I really began to really work on hearing God's voice, I was laying on my bedroom floor and um, I heard him ask me, ask me a question. And I said, oh, okay, is my marriage over? And, uh, and I heard no before I could even finish my thought. 
And then I said, okay, well then, what do I have to do? And I heard nothing. A friend of mine uh, told me to pray and ask God what the key was. And this was literally the week of my divorce going through. Out of obedience, I did, I prayed, and the, the next morning, God showed me a picture of a key and the word love. I started loving my husband unconditionally no matter what he did. We have an eight-year-old and a five-year-old, and um, you know, through that process, my daughters were able to see. I'm, I didn't hide much from them, so they saw when I was hurt, and they, they saw me um, praying, and um, we would play praise and worship music, and we would dance, and and go to church, and we would pray for Daddy. <laughs> and I remember when my, my oldest found out that her daddy was coming home, she ran over to me the, the moment he walked out the door and she said, Mom, our prayers worked. You know, Daddy's coming home. And that was just amazing because I was so broken and hurt, but trying to be a mom, and the enemy gets in there and says, well, you're failing, you're not doing enough. And but when that happened, you know, my daughters got to witness that. We planned um, a restoration ceremony a few months later, and then we got remarried. It took over four years, but um, today my marriage is restored, and my husband is home, and I'm expecting our third baby. The four years that my husband was gone was a journey for God to be enough. No matter what happened with my marriage, no matter what happened with my life, I came to the point where it didn't matter because all I had was Jesus and that was good. And James continued to say something that we got to take note. In James chapter 4, verse 3, When you ask, you do not receive because you ask with wrong motives that you may spend what you get on your pleasures. And James says, you realize the problem is still with you. And you're hoping to receive something, not for the good, but for your own pleasures, that you ask God with wrong motives. And instead, God is not going to mess up your life by just giving everything you want. So let me ask you today, is there someone in your family today who is feeling pressured because of you? Is your mom or is your dad is feeling pressured because of you making choices that would hurt yourself and hurt the people around you? Is, there, is your spouse feeling the pressure to, in order just to meet your needs, in order to make you happy every single day? Is there someone in your family members who is suffering right now in trying to meet your demands and measuring to your desires? So what could you do if there is someone who is being pressured because of you? Brother and sisters, my friend, take that pressure off from them. How? Get on our knees before the Lord in prayer and say, Lord, this is what I want for my husband. This is what I want for my wife. This is what I want for my child. So brother and sister in Christ, my friend, why do we quarrel and fight? Because I don't get what I want. And why they quarrel back? Because they don't get what they want. Then how do we resolve this in the midst of conflict, no matter which levels of relationship? The way is that when everyone would just pause right there at that moment, in the midst of conflict, everyone would admit that I'm also a part of the problem, that I have the desire to get what I want. And when I don't get it, that's where conflict comes. So what do we do? My friend, get on your knees and come to know that God is here and pour out your cry unto the Lord. Lord, this is what I want. This is what I want for my family, for my wife, for my husband, and for my children. And ask God. 
So brother and sister in Christ, if there is any one of you who are in the midst of conflict and you have been in this conflict for perhaps weeks or months or even years or in, even in the midst of starting of this conflict to become tension, before you even move further, why not come before God humbly unto Him and acknowledge and admit that I'm also part of this problem because I'm in conflict because I want something that I don't get it. But instead of nagging and forcing and yelling and scolding is why not come to the Lord right now today and in prayer and ask God to help settle, resolve the conflict. If you are one of those who would like to ask God to help you, let us pray together. O oh Lord Jesus Christ, we humbly come before you knowing that we are weak in many different ways. And sometimes we do things for our own pleasures, for our own motives, for our own good. But instead of thinking about what others need, sometimes we move basic merely just because of our based on our emotions. And Lord, therefore, we humbly come to you and repent from our sin and we pray that you help us to think right to know that that we are also part of the problem and we pray that you help every person who are in this conflict that even helping myself to do the right thing to speak the right word to react in the right way and to know that I'm part of the problem and God we pray that may you change the situation may you heal the broken hearts may you forgive our sins and may you actually break off every lies and may you free my family members or whoever that I'm in conflict with from any sinful habits that they are indulged in today. And I commit myself and my family unto you. And as we are going to pray, brothers and sisters, if there is any one of you, you have not made the choice to believe in Jesus Christ and you know that only God can change the lives of people, why not today make this choice? If you are one of those, join me in a prayer because God knows your heart. O oh Lord Jesus, here I come before you. I acknowledge that I am a sinner. In many ways, I make wrong choices, speak wrong words and hurt people around me. And here right now, I pray, may you forgive my sins and may you come into my life to be my Lord and Savior so that I will have a new life and Lord, may you give me a new heart so that I will learn to love you and love the people around me. And Lord, we thank you. I thank you for forgiving my sins and for coming into my life and may you help me to grow to understand you more in jesus name we all pray amen god bless you all hi good morning church good morning everyone thank you for joining our online service and i thank you pastor amos for the message and this morning your sermon reminds me of the snoopy comics lucy says to snoopy there are times when you really bug me but i must admit there are also times when i feel like giving you a big hug Snoopy replies, that's the way I am, buggable and huggable. <laughs> My friend, are you a bugger or a hugger? Welcome to real relationship. Conflict is real, conflict is inevitable. And we all need each other, yet we annoy each other. And we are like two porcupines, and we need each other, but sometimes we poke each other. Conflict is real. So church, my friend, I want to encourage you to approach conflict as an opportunity for growth. When in a conflict situation, watch your heart, watch your tongue, and appreciate differences and be patient with one another. So my friends, let us learn to love and accept one another just like the way Jesus loves us and accepts us. So be a hugger. Maybe you can do like that. Be a hugger. Yes, you can do that. Now before we well, dismiss from here, before you disconnect, before you click the stop button, uh, I have two quick announcements. Number one, Church, I miss you, I love you, and I remember you. When I look at the empty chairs, I remember your favorite seats. Here, here, and here. I really miss the time together. And I strongly believe that with God's strength, we will get through this crisis together. Remember, God is in us, God is for us, and God is with us, Emmanuel. So church, stay strong, stay healthy, stay connected uh, spiritually and relationally. And I want to thank God for His protection and His uh, faithful provision upon you and your family and as well as the church family. And I want to thank you personally for your faithful giving and the financial support for our church. 
and uh, thank you for your faithful prayers. I am encouraged and thankful for your love for one another. Number two, we all know the government approve of religious gathering and we are in a green zone area. I am looking forward to reopening the church. I am really excited. However, there are a lot of things to consider. There are conditions and SOP to follow and we need to submit and wait for approval. And uh, I want to let you know that we are praying and we are preparing and we bought hand sanitizers and masks and infrared thermometer. And church, I want to let you know that your safety is our highest priority. Until we are fully prepared that our facilities are safe for you, for your children, your family, your neighbors, and we will continue our online service and connect groups until further notice. In the meantime, help us plan better with the survey and I will post the survey link at our Hillside WhatsApp group. But last but not least, I want to thank God for you, for Hillside family, for your encouragement during these trying times. I long for the day that we can meet physically again to worship God together. But until then, let us continue to do what Hillside family is known for doing, being disciples of Christ by loving one another. John chapter 13 verse 35. So continue to connect with God and others, continue to push through from me zone to we zone and continue to pray, continue to look to Christ, the head of the church. May God bless you, your family and your friends and may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in Him so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. And everybody say, Amen. May God bless you and have a blessed weekend. So